Dear Arundhati Roy, dear ladies and gentlemen. Donc, je vais faire ce discours en anglais. Je l'ai écrit en anglais. Après, il a été traduit en français. Awarded since 1975, the Prix Européen de l'essai Charles Veillon has tried to address some fundamental questions. For example, what does it mean to see the world today, to observe, to write? How does language shape our experience? And what is an essay anyway? A more difficult question to answer than you might think. More recently, the jury asked itself, what does European mean? What values lie at the core of being European? And can and should they be challenged? This year's prize jury began by reading Arundhati Roy's newest collection of essays published in 2020, titled Azadi, the word for freedom in Urdu. As a body of readers, we were touched by the beauty of her writing and the accuracy of her observations. What ensued were wonderful, intense, challenging discussions about what it means to be a reader today, how the individual experience and the universal are intertwined, and how utterly important it is to keep the imagination alive. Azadi led us to read her volume of collection of collected nonfiction, My Seditious Heart, published in 2019, nearly 1,000 pages that set us off on a journey from the political to the personal, with stops along the way that include the dangers of nuclear war, the meaning of empire, and resistance. Reading Arundhati Roy means looking at injustice through the lens of a critical, a seditious heart. The very word seditious, meaning to incite or cause people to rebel against a state authority, was used against her by Indian politicians, but she reappropriates it for herself, making it a powerful form of resistance against mass media, public opinion, and simplistic ways of being and thinking. Reading Arundhati Roy also means being transported somewhere without ever losing oneself. It means being able to address harsh questions and not to be complacent about the current injustices all around us. India is very often at the center of her writing and thinking, the way Europe might be in ours, and why it's important to acknowledge the differences and similarities is even more vital to transpose and translate her experience so that it hits us where it hurts. Otherwise, we, keep, we risk keeping her descriptions of nespotism, rising fascism, and the spread of disinformation at a distance when the world we live in, for better or worse, is connected. Too often in Switzerland, we are blind to our environment. Could a seditious heart do us good? In the first essay in Enzadi, where she refers to her novel, The Ministry of Utmost Happiness, she writes, it is not only the author, but the characters themselves who swim around in an ocean of exquisite imperfection, who constantly translate for and to each other, who constantly speak across languages, and who constantly realize that people who speak the same language are not necessarily the ones who understand each other best. This year's jury is composed of native French, German, and Italian speakers. Our common language is French. At a very humble level, we are always in between languages and cultures, navigating ways to understand each other. While discussing Arundhati Roy's essays and the themes that underlie them, we found the I, the unique voice, that probing eye that tries to make sense of its world. That, it, what, that is what defines her essays. For us, they are personal and universal at once. They try to find a language that can be heard, slow cooked and yet quick, urgent and utterly lyrical. Arundhati Roy's essays enlighten us, not in the religious sense or in the philosophical sense of the enlightenment, but as one human who speaks to another to make her think and bring in focus ways of seeing that, has been, that have been obscured by layers of complacency and comfort. And of course, 
the essay in Roy's hands is also a literary enterprise that allows multiple readings and a multitude of new interrogations. She applies John Berger's ways of seeing to the political world as well as to the inner world, to the past as well as to the present and the future. And in doing so, she makes us wish that saving the world wouldn't be just an idealistic goal for dreamers, but a necessary one for all of us. In The God of Small Things, Shako tells Esther and Rahel the story of the Earth Woman. Arundhati Roy writes, he made them imagine that the Earth, 4,600 million years old, was a 46-year-old woman. It had taken the whole of the Earth woman's life for the Earth to become what it was, for the oceans to part, for the mountains to rise. The Earth woman was 11 years old when the first single cell organism appeared. She was over 45 just eight months ago when dinosaurs roamed the Earth. The whole of human civilization as we know it began two hours ago in the Earth Woman's life. These two hours matter. Thank you, dear Arundhati Roy, for keeping faith in the imagination, for showing us how big and small the world is, how we can try to grasp its complexities by describing it, writing about it, against it and with it, because describing what we see is to address the problem. It is for all these reasons that the Charles Veillon Foundation is delighted and honored to award this year's prize to the brilliant writer and thinker Arundhati Roy for her entire body of work. Thank you very much.